Hello everyone, this here is the LEGO City Express Passenger Train. It comes with just 764 pieces, and I built it live over on my Twitch channel last year when it came out. And the reason that I did not review it until now is that, well, frankly, I was just behind on a whole lot of stuff, including cleaning up my LEGO City room that had fallen into disarray. I wanted to be sure to get some nice shots of this going around my entire city layout so that you could see what it really looks like in action in a somewhat natural kind of setting. Now, if you see a view products link on this video on it or nearby it on your screen, you can click that to see some places you can buy it. I paid $190 US, which is its regular retail price. The set comes with six minifigures. You see there's a locomotive and two passenger cars with multiple uses. A platform. This does have the powered up system built into it. So you got the motor inside of there that actually works. You got a physical controller. You don't have to use an app for that. And this also has lights in it. Plus they do give you enough track to do a full loop. And then it gets much better than that because these are common. Turn pieces are common. These are not. They give you two stacks. So a total of eight pieces of straight, so you can turn it into a nice oval. The locomotive has very strong French TGV vibes, just with a color swap to it, very reminiscent of the Horizon Express set that LEGO came out with that was underappreciated. I think there are a lot of folks who didn't get it at that time who want it now, but this is close to that. It's not at the creator expert level in terms of, of level of difficulty of putting it together, but it does have some nice uh, building techniques, including the use of some parts for some physical detail on here on the side with the tiles that weren't of, uh, weren't possible back in the days of the Horizon Express because they needed a sticker or a print. We just didn't have these nice diagonal tiles available. Also up here, we got the nice rounded nose. Now these trans light blue uh, slopes here are able to let some light through because they do have, again, the, the light unit in there and you'll see that in action a little bit later. This is a sticker in order to get that transition between the gray and the white to show the kind of sloping sloping nose uh, you know, towards the front. Got a little bit of rounding on here. Of course, this doesn't represent uh, fuel tanks in this case because it's supposed to be an electrical unit. And here's your electrical pickup up here so you can extend that out. Of course, there's no appropriate thing in Lego form to actually give you your overhead wiring, but you can imagine it there. And there's also a nice little button that we can push that is a little bit of a remote button that pushes farther down in there to turn the powered up hub on or off to essentially turn the entire train on or off. This is a sticker right here. You got some texture details and then you have really easy access to the cab that just swivels open all the way. And there's just a single seat there. You can see a little bit of the wiring for the lights and a printed console piece in the front. The ends of the locomotive and cars are all angled in on the sides, kind of chamfered at the corners. So you are able to get a really, really close coupling there, even when you're going in some sharp turns. And when it's back on the straights, the gap is kept to an absolute minimum. The two passenger cars are almost identical from the outside. They just have different stickers used on a couple of the windows. This is the recolored black version of the large window frame. It's one by six by five, I've, I believe, with the, at the time of the release of this set, new color for the doors, the, the three wide doors to give you that trans brown, really wide opening there. Notice the well car setup is very, very low and it's using the individual pieces, not the old well car single piece, but these these uh, split ones so you can change the length potentially if you wanted to or also just use these one at a time and the doors open up on both sides to get access to the interior there are two sections of roof that can be completely removed and it's not too difficult to take this center section out either but it's intended to be a little bit more structural because it goes across the door here where you don't have a lot of support but if you wanted to take that out it does come out fairly cleanly to get you just a little bit more access into that center section i'm going to leave it on right now you have a couple of indications of your your trip there so one on either side again done with stickers and this is the diner car so there's a spot where you can walk up and there's a small table over there it's just a standing table and you can buy a croissant you can get yourself some coffee back in the back and also a hot dog and they've got a suggestion of a refrigerator here but there's nothing in it at this time and also a cash register off to the side meanwhile the other end just has, again, a table. So 
continuing with the diner car idea, uh, slot over there to put some luggage if you have it, and then just two seats. This car also accommodates a wheelchair that can be held in place with that droid head. The other car is simpler and has a little bit more seating because it does not have the diner unit in it. As you saw, there was no suggestion of being able to walk past the diner unit there. The way that they've done the ends here, they suggest doors there for going between different cars, but there's no way to really get many figures to be posed going through there. So you do have to use your imagination and I think that's fine. So you can see that this end is set up exactly the same way as the left end on the other one was. And then you've got this over here which is the same thing again, just mirrored. But this car here has accommodations for bicycles. So a bicycle can be hung right there and another one can be put over here. This is how that's intended to work. It puts the bicycle into a vertical position and leaves the doorway entryway completely empty. But it's a little bit tricky to line that up just right. You can also just put a bike in here on, on the floor and just find a spot where it will connect. Now here you end up you know, using up some floor space in the middle. I guess I could have pushed that back a little bit farther, but you know, this is also feasible. So you could still put two bikes in there. You just have a little bit less room for standing passengers. The platform is basic. It connects right up to a couple straight tracks and it gives you just a fully studded surface. At least it's a ramp, so it's intended to be accessible. A little bit of greenery there, a bench that could hold a maximum of two seated characters, plenty of, of standing space, and then just a map, you know, just a, a route map there, which is another stickered piece. Now, this does take the warning of mind the gap to a whole other dimension, because that is a tremendous gap when you think of it from the perspective of a minifigure trying to, to walk across, you know, just imagine having to make that jump. That's quite a leap. You know, even if you can grab onto a door handle there, like that's, that's just crazy. You can almost get by with the, with the, as a matter of fact, if I did not have the, the laptop in hand there, you could get by with the doors open. So that's silly. You know, you have to use your imagination a lot there. The reason for this is that especially the locomotive, if you had a turn right by here, especially the locomotive has a lot of front overhang and you need to have clearance so that it doesn't run into you know if you're coming right off of a turn immediately before this it needs clearance so it doesn't run into the platform if you're able to use more of your straight track and give this enough enough space where you've got straight on either side of it so you don't have to deal with that then you can modify this down and reduce that gap a bit Here's a quick look at the two human powered vehicles in the set. The wheelchair has the bright green and trans bright green wheels on it, wheels and well, tires also molded back here as well as the gray colored frame. And this is not the classic magenta color, hot pink color that was used for the Deutsche Telekom or um, uh, T-Mobile design of, of classic bikes. This is actually a dark magenta. So a, a new color was introduced for that. This one's got some messenger bags on it as well. Taking a closer look at the minifigures, you got two different styles of prints for the torsos, for the rail system employees in this case. And I think the idea here is that this is the driver and this is a uh, ticket taker person, conductor, I, I, I suppose, kind of half, half and half, but of course you can swap parts back and forth between the two. Notice this one is suggested having a vest with different color of arms. And then this is the bike rider over here who's sweaty from, you know, going fast. <laughs> also has a, a, note, a notepad, notepad, notebook, laptop, computer that's folded up. I don't know uh, how they're supposed to carry that on the bike. I guess they're just one hand in the whole thing. And looking at the back here, there is one alternate face between these. And here are three more passengers. So the one on the right has mid-sized legs, a little bit shorter, but still able to be articulated and still able to sit in seats normally. You got the nice print for the mobile device here and also a piece of luggage. And this is the guy who was intended to be in the wheelchair. But of course, again, it's Lego. You can just put whoever, wherever you want. Nice, uh, nice torso print for this one. I don't think we're going to see that a whole lot. I think this is the second time that we've seen this torso print over here. And this one is a common one that's been around for some time. You do get two alternate faces between these three figures. This is all I was left with for extra pieces. And then this is what the sticker sheet looks like. Honestly, 
this feels appropriate for this type of set. Just looking back through history and for the size of it and everything, and a lot of the stickers are completely optional if you hate attaching them. All right, let's talk about price and value. Again, I paid $190 US for this, 190. It is 160 euros, 140 pounds UK, 240 uh, Canadian dollars. So out of those, the United States gets the worst price uh, by, by a little bit. Interestingly, if you adjust things for inflation, this is almost the exact same price as the last passenger train. And I think that this is a much better passenger train. Also, when you compare this to other things on the market, as far as toy trains are concerned, decent ones, you know, not high end, not hobby level stuff, but you know, toy trains that might be able to compete with this. This is not too much more expensive, but it is a bit larger than like a, a nice HO scale uh, uh, train set. So surprisingly, even though $190 US sounds like a lot, it's not too outrageous. I still feel like it's it's too much, just, just myself. I've got that gut feeling. I would like it to be, let's say about 170 today in today's dollars. But, you know, take take that as you will. Hopefully there are some discounts that have shown up by now. This thing runs around a layout very nicely and it looks so good because it has such small gaps between the cars. That was really exceptionally well done with simple building techniques. You know, this is, this is not an advanced model. It's not trying to be an advanced model. It's a seven plus kit. It's for kids seven years old and older. So for it to look as good, as sleek as it does, to work as well as it does, I think is, is a triumph. Uh, definitely you know, older teens and adults, but many of them would want more from, from a, a Lego train. And that's understandable, but this starts you off in a very good place in my opinion. I wish that the canopy was a little bit larger on it, maybe had a print on it or something like that. But otherwise, I think that this is a very well-designed toy. Now, even though it does cost so much, I did go ahead and buy a second one. I couldn't help myself. I had to. I had to see what this looked like as a full train, double-ended. So I got some footage of that going around my city as well. And it's just glorious. It is, it is, right there right on the level with the the horizon express the the t the previous tgv which was so good um i think that a lot of people once this gets discontinued a lot of people are going to look back on it and say gosh i wish i'd gotten that <laughs> even though this is just a toy train it is really really good uh, yeah i mean just look at it just look at it now i will point out that putting two trains together is a little bit difficult with the powered up system. Uh, I haven't looked into aftermarket or third party uh, hacks and, and such with the powered up controls, but just with the stuff that you get without decompiling or deconstructing anything or using extra tools, in order to get that to work, you need to sync both of your controllers. If you buy two of them, you gotta sync up both of the controllers, have both the controllers on, have the engine at the front, going forward and have the engine at the back going in reverse. You can't control the whole train, as far as I can tell, from one single um, one single controller at a time. Another thing that you can do requires that you buy some parts of your own and make yourself a, uh, a, a, a dummy bogey. You know, just one that just doesn't have any motor in it, so it's just freewheeling. Again, that does require that you buy some parts of, of your own. And unfortunately, Lego does not offer a kit for that. Uh, one other thing that I, realized I, I didn't show you was just what the what the loop looks like if you just use the track that's included in the set. It looks like that. So that's the that's the oval. No switch or anything, obviously, but that's the the shape of what, what you get, which is a lot better than most of the train layouts or train sets that Lego has sold over the years. Again, just the number of straights is good but the platform ends up looking small there overall i think it's a great starting point the unfortunate thing is that a lot of kids these days are not into trains so much um you know that it just is what it is and, and you know running trains does take a whole bunch of space and all um you also gotta stay on top of batteries and, and stuff like that but all in all 
I'm happy with this. And I think that for a seven plus Lego train, it is very good. And I think that it will be looked upon with great love from folks in the future. I'll try to compile together some of the extra footage of this running around my city and put that over on my Lego City channel. Of course, link in the video description, my main channel page and all that. Try to get that up within a day or so of the publishing of this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that that was of some value to you and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks again for your patience too.